It's time for the papers. We call it Off the Press on The Breakfast this morning. As Zika Uyai took as on standby, he joins the conversation from the FCT. It's good to have you join us this morning. Thanks for having me. Always a pleasure to be on your station. Thanks for having me. All right. A pleasure as well. Uh, we set off with the Nation newspaper this morning. Why APC changed dates for governorship or the primaries? It's the bold caption on the Nation. Election of presidential candidates May 29 and 30th. Party fears INEC sanctions. Of course. Uh, I know it's very, very bent on doing the right thing. Lockdown in Southeast State over Namdi Kanu. Uh, lockdown in Southeast State over Namdi Kanu, especially when, you know, bail application has been rejected. And you also have George Denies, IPOP leader, bail. Um, that's a rider on the net. Away from that, Malami Ngige. Silver Talon, no, to no fate soon. Uh, it's also another caption this morning on The Nation. More endorsement for Tunubu in Kwara and Bainway. Again, Lagos restricts Okada operation in six councils. Ongoing legal battle likely to delay the Alafin's selection. Okay. 47 billion naira probe, EFCC detained ex NDDC MD Timai Kare and Minister Suspend Accountant General on the probe for 80 billion naira fraud. And uh, we also take this one quickly before we move away from the nation newspaper. Court declares Adeleke as PDP candidate. Five die in Abuja market fire. PDP once again rigging. Uh, talking about the AKT 2022 elections. Rejects PDP, STP, Fire Me tells women. And Iniedo campaigns against violence. Uh, the headlines you find this morning on the Nation newspaper. We're moving on to the leadership newspaper. The lead story for this morning, APC PDP in game of hide and seek over primaries with some riders. 24 hours after opposition party's adjustment of activities, governing party reschedules timetable. We are not bothered by APC's antics, uh, or antiques, uh, says um, PDP. A race between Amechi and me, says Badaru. Atiku vows to crush bandits. Kwamkwaso Shikarao uh, form an alliance against APC PDP in Kano. All right, uh, PMB to decide returning minister's fate. That's uh, the federal government saying. Alleged 80 billion naira fraud. Federal government suspends accountants general. Federal government approves 169 billion naira private sector investments in road. Abuja timber market burned over woman's death. All right, let's see if there are other stories we can take on the leadership. Police kill six bandits, arrest kidnappers, killers of Greenfield, Bethel students. Those are all of the stories on the front page of the leadership newspaper. Away from the leadership newspaper, we take a quick look at the uh, Daily Independent. On the Daily Independent newspaper, returning ministers await Buhari's reassumption verdict. <laughs> Malami Tullan attend federal executive meeting. It's a rider in Gige Silver's fate hangs in the balance. And five yet killed in shops burnt as trader or cutter riders clash in Abuja market. Federal government suspends Attorney General over alleged 80 billion naira scam postpones FAAC meeting. And APC adjustment date of presidential and Guba National Assembly primaries. Or APC adjust dates of presidential, Guba and National Assembly primaries. Now, fingers are crossed to see what becomes of INEC in this situation. Especially that's a ruling party. Deny zoning presidential, vice presidential ticket to the northeast and the southeast. Very interesting. 
and the Lagos State Governor Songo Liu orders total ban on Okada and six local government nine LCDAs. Gunmen kill Ebony LGA chairman and three relatives and security guard. Ohaneze Islam's NEF over uh, cessation comment on Southeast. You also have the Oshun 2022 court affirms Adeleke as PDP Gubo candidate. Court adjourns trial to May 26 denies Namdi Kanu bail. EFCC quizzes and detains ex NDDC MD Sima Ekera. The headlines you found this morning on the Daily Independent. And finally, the Punch newspaper. APC governorship primaries. Tough battles in Oyo, Sokoto, Rivers as 44,045 delegates elect candidates. Ameji, Abe, Supremacy Battle Resort in Gunshot Chaos are factions uh, trade words. APC denies zoning, presidency shifts north. Okay. APC denies zoning, presidency shifts north on National Assembly governorship primaries. Jet A1 others may push flight above 100,000 naira. That's according to domestic airlines. 80 billion naira fraud. Uh, EFCC uncovers 17 properties linked to at accountants general. 25 presidential aspirant uh, field submitted some says uh, APC. A number of police warn against uh, violence as court denies Colonel Bell. Asapon strike for 147 days on the Buhari. Imported vehicles, customs to redeploy. Controversial evaluation policy on Friday. Well, let's have Ezekiel Yaito, who joins the conversation. Uh, he's a public affairs analyst, all the way from Akwaibum State, speaking to us, I mean, prior to your previous introduction. Ezekiel Yaito, it's good to have you join us this morning. Thanks for having me. I hope uh, my audio is clear. Loud and clear. Thank you. Let's start off with the nation. On the nation, it talks about the APC and change of date for governorship and other primaries. Uh, what do you think of this? What do you make of the situation? Especially that INEC is saying that they cannot go back on changing the timetable because of the implication it would have on the entire electoral process. You see, there's this um, palpable fear between the, par between the parties. Um, that's why uh, APC in particular is concerned that um, if um, they are not careful in handling their timelines, uh, they may have a lot of aggrieved people who, if they are not given the party ticket, may uh, very likely move to um, other parties. And as a result, they are playing the cat and mouse K game between APC and PDP. That's why you see the PDP adjust its timetable and um, almost immediately the APC finds time, uh, finds reason uh, rather, to also adjust their timetable. Uh, it's just to see to what extent they will effectively frustrate um, aggrieved members from crossing from one uh, party to the other, because at, as it stands, none of the parties has what you call members. They only have interested parties. What that means is that uh, their allegiance is not to any party whatsoever. It's to their personal interest. So wherever they think their personal interest will be better served, they will move them. So you can imagine a man would be in APC in the morning and in the afternoon he's in the PDP. And he doesn't mind moving to another party, you know, um, any time along the, 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 the line. I will tell you something very interesting that happened, you know, in the last general elections. Um, there were a lot of aggrieved people in um, PDP. No, not the last. I think it was 2015. A lot of aggrieved people in PDP and APC. And all of a sudden, they decided they would rather team up with the third force, even the five um, key um, 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 governors that left and they moved to ADC 
And then while they were at it, all of a sudden, Mr. Atiku came in and we are told he made very great offers. We'll give you back your ticket. We'll give you support and everything. And boom, they all moved back to PDP. That's when they now moved um, to, to, from APC. They came into ADC, but they moved out back to PDP. And uh, so the movement is so fluid that no party is sure these are my members. As a result, you find them all the time being very apprehensive and trying to outdo each other. So if um, PDP adjusts its timelines again, you'll be surprised that APC will add, find reason to do that again. I think the person that is in, on the driving seat now is more like um, the other parties. A APC is having a lot of um, challenges, and um, that's why they can find it very difficult to tell you the direction they are going to take and whether there's going to be a consensus. And if you read the current electoral act, there are people in, I'm told in, uh, or rather I've, I've come to believe, there are people in APC that are just waiting to play the spoiler. They've left the party in their heart, but they are waiting for you to do that consensus. And they're going to tell you, no, we're not going to agree. And there's going to be a lot of this. I want to encourage the so-called smaller parties to take themselves serious. Because these guys, that impunity, thinking they can do and undo anything, is going to lead to a lot of disqualification because they are going to take a lot of actions that will not stand in the court of law. As a result, we need to pray for the judiciary to be able to look less on money and focus more on justice to the people. I think that the smaller parties, so to speak, ADC and all the others, they should get themselves ready because a lot of the big parties in many of the states are going to be disqualified. And what happened in, 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 in Imo State not too long ago might just play out again, where the first person was disqualified, the second person couldn't take it, the third person couldn't take it, and it went to the fourth person. The current governor of Imo State was number four on the ballot. Today, he's the governor. So I just want to tell the so-called smaller parties to take themselves serious because the impunity, you know, uh, there's a saying in our language, what that means that the hand you used to catch fly, catch fly, catch fly. You now see, um, not a fly this time, um, um, what a bee. And you mistake a bee for a fly and you take the hand that you used to catch fly to catch a bee. You don't, you don't have to be told what the consequence will be. I think that APC and PDP, they are mistaking a bee for a fly. And the current INEC, I believe, will, will lead to its billing of um, an institution we, be, we should be proud of. All right. Uh, let's stay with the Nation newspaper. Um, there are some very interesting stories. Uh, but uh, let's talk about uh, Malami Ngege Silver Talent, soon to know fate. I, 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 I find it very disturbing and very unfortunate. You see, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, there are many regrets that he will have when he leaves office, very many regrets. One of the regrets was him not being able to draw a line between the office of the president and the person of um, um, Obon, um, uh, God, God help me, uh, Buhari. The reason is that Obon Buhari is at liberty to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants, however he wants. He's at liberty to do that. But the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria does not enjoy such liberties. He does things that he must do, even if he doesn't like to do it. For instance, if I don't like to wake up before 9 or 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I like to wake up about 11 o'clock, the office of the president requires you to wake up early enough and be up to work during working hours because the Constitution has clearly stated working hours in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And if you are a president that cares about rule of law, 
while there will be sometimes exceptions, you want to work within that tightrope for that period you have accepted that assignment and responsibility. To that extent, there are certain body language that is not okay. For instance, if a man has resigned his appointment, gone to the extent of buying an expression of form to contest an office, and you have come to say that all those that want to contest for any election should leave my office, it's not about whether the law says or the law does not say. It did not say according to section. It just said, if you want to contest election, I would like you to leave my office. And these people that contested election, he had no business. And when he was having a valedictory service, they, for them, they were there. So it should be given how the central bank governor is back when he's, they said he's a card carrying member of the party. The ward chairman came and said so. How that person who is now partisan should walk back to the central bank I can't understand how the other ministers, whom we know had tendered their resignation, should walk back to their offices. I don't understand how the attorney general, is he going to seek for legal advice from who? The same attorney general that is involved? What, what does he hope to hear? I just think that Mr. President, those who love him, his people, should, should, should talk to him. Because when he leaves office, he will really know the people that work with him. And I think that he should have a discussion at this point with former President Jonathan, how on his way back on the same day, the same day that he left office, on his way back at the airport, he was denied access into the presidential waiting. The same day he leaves office. I mean, it would just be for goodness sake, take it for granted. Even that last, you, you know, and, and the, the villa became a ghost town. You need to read some things and listen to some things from people like Mr. Ruben Abati. Mr. President should, should, should not be oblivious of, of, of this. They say that the memory of man is treacherous. But if you cannot remember your own, at least learn from current experiences and let him sit up and do the right thing so that we can hail him. I've already hailed him for signing the Electoral Act, and I've said that whatever crime he commits or sin he commits between now and end of his tenure, I have forgiven in advance. One day, Nigerians will know why I've made such a strong statement. That Electoral Act, we can monkey with it, but one day we'll wake up and see what is inside, and that it was the hand of divinity that moved Mr. President to sign it, which gives me the confidence that God is still in charge of the affairs of this country. Um, um, let's also um, look at, you know, the arrests by EFCC of um, ex-NDDC MD and semi Kara over alleged 47 billion naira. And uh, some people are saying that it's just a stunt to prove that the fight against corruption, um, you know, it's very effective. But really, looking at this, uh, we also know that the court of competence jurisdiction is expected to prove all of this. What do you make of it? <laughs> um, you see, the case of uh, Mr. Nsima Ekere is a case that um, if you are from a Kwaibom state, you look at it from a completely different perspective and paradigm. When did he leave office? And why is this just coming up suddenly? They've just finished investigations, right? Anyway, the thinking around a Kwaibom is that after the Minister of um, Minister, um, Niger Delta Affairs had resigned, that one of the possible, very, very possible candidates for a replacement uh, would be Mr. Nsima Ekere, who is a very, very, very highly placed uh, party member. And that there are some organizations, some bodies, some institutions, some persons that are really, really uncomfortable with Mr. Nsima Ekere coming back as the as the MD of the Niger, of the, of, as the minister of the Niger Delta, and going back to supervise the NDDC, where a forensic audit was carried out, and we have not seen anybody implicated. 
I think the first body that should have implicated Mr. Nsima Ekere should have been the forensic audit. And we didn't see anything. While I'm not holding brief for him, I'm wondering why all of a sudden it's coming out now. But my position is you do the crime, you do the time. But that doing the crime has to be by a, a, a competent court of um, a court of competent jurisdiction. All along since he left office, we've not heard anything. But as soon as the minister of the Niger Delta resigned, the case came up for the six billion. And they should be careful how they even handle that matter. Because that oil, if he poor, they may have to ask what he did with the 46 billion, if it is true. You know, this country, we played the ostrich too much. How do you fund elections? Mr. President doesn't know how elections are funded. He doesn't know, honestly, for real. Malami does not know how elections are funded. I think one day the story of this country will be told. One day, people will arise who will put the interests of this country first. One day, people arise who will not care whose ox is God. That's why I'm saying, come 2023, please let's stop all this APC, PDP, APC, PDP, APC, PDP. Let Nigerians, let Nigerians wake up to know that they have a choice. They have an alternative. They have competent people whose hands have not been soiled by the corruption that has pervaded and brought us to our knees to become the poverty capital of the world. That day should come now, today. We cannot allow people in the villages who do not have a clear understanding of what is going on to just be collecting 10 naira, 1,000, 5,000 to elect the next president while we sit down on television and do analysis. Why we sit down on, on, on Facebook and on social media and do critics, and yet we do not go and get registered, we don't get our PVC, we do not inform our people, we not enlighten ourselves and make sure that we take informed decision. As a result, what do you think is going on? Politics, forget about this issue of he took money, he didn't take money. They all know if he took money, it was for them. There's nothing that Mr. Nsima Ekere as an individual will do for, with, for something billion. It's not even possible for him to take it except there's an understanding from the top. To get a billion, like, like, like you talk of the, 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 the accountant general, to get money out of system is not as easy. A billion is not a million, it's not a thousand. It's a lot of money. You can't zoom such money without an understanding of the system. And what was the money we used for? It was to service the system. So they should please pay me all this uh, being holy for nothing. They are not. They are not. They are all complicit. They are all, you know. Uh, my time is up. <laughs> Let's also look at um, other headlines that we do have here. And uh, it also talks about, on the leadership, it talks about President Muhammad Buhari deciding to, uh, to decide returning minister's fate. <laughs> you know, when the president gave that order asking that those who have intention to um, become or, I mean, vie for any political office should uh, resign their position, especially that they are appointed. Just re echoing what the, um, you know, the law says. Now it's on the other side because the, the president also still have to decide the fate of these ministers. <laughs> I so find it I not. find it very um, hilarious. But Ezekiel, can you hear us? Yeah, I talk. I find it, I find it very um, hilarious. But Ezekiel, can you hear us? Yeah, I talk. So I feel like we have uh, uh, a delay or more like a, a delay in communication. As soon as we're able to establish proper contact with Ezekiel, yeah, I talk, we will uh, return with that question. But Justin, I like I said, I find it very, I find it very interesting. It's it's funny because, you know, the president would always appoint, you know, those he would appoint members of his cabinet, the ministers, yes, and what have you, and that's within his capacity to do all of that. And then he felt like um, they don't understand the dynamics of the entire situation, and then the president went further on to say. 
you have to resign if you have any interest. <laughs> so now for those who want to return, it's also an issue because the president can decide to say, what did you who say you in the first place? <laughs> yes, no, it is. Uh, yeah, he actually decides who he wants. I don't know so. why I'm laughing, but please excuse me. <laughs> no, it, it is true that he has um, the right to appoint whoever he chooses, although it's subjected to approval uh, you know, by the Senate. You know, so if he's told you to resign, if you have political interest... That Not should... because that's, he's re-echoing what the law says. Mm -hmm. The law is very even, specific. Even about if that. he's, uh, even he if the to. law didn't say that, the fact is that uh, he dis he can decide to ask you to go whenever he wants to. No, so it, it's a bit dicey. <laughs> it's a bit dicey, right? Uh, you know how it is that you see that in that instruction has been given despite the fact that the law. So I just think that the president had to echo it, but we have queried the fact that the wind did the president to echo this Can't or even to do say what it, is right you know, before being having the president or someone poke you, you know, to act in a certain direction. Mm. Now, on the other hand, is that because you were appointed as a minister, you were appointed by the president. It's within his, you know, jurisdiction. He has the right to appoint whoever, subject to the scrutiny of the Senate. Uh, the Senate. Now that you know this minister, <laughs> don't come back. Who will bring no, back? Come back? The president also can decide to say, no. okay, you, you. I don't I mean, want, I don't want you. Saying, but do you think it would be very logical <laughs> and sensible to have? Um, how many more days do we have before... The fact that if you resign, you resign. So why are you coming back to come and do what? No, but, but it's okay. <laughs> I mean, because it's within the ambience, I mean, it's within his jurisdiction to act. My question would now be, do you mm -hmm. think the president would um, act differently? Would he still welcome him back? I, 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 I can't speak for the president. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> but the truth <laughs> is that if you have resigned, don't even just take your load and go to your house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> If the president, the president will now decide to appoint someone else to fill in the space. So would it be logical? Let's mm -hmm. even to bring look them at the back fact after, that, yeah, they've, exactly. after they've resigned. No. Okay, so that's what you're saying. <laughs> you're saying it's not logical to bring them back. Yeah, after for the president to bring them back after asking them to resign. But how many more resigned, days do we have open until 2020, um, 2023? 2022 is over? Before yeah, we have uh, to the elections. We have, um, I mean, to the handover. We have um, barely a year. So do you think it's um, sensible to have the president appoint, them back. you know, no, not bringing them back, okay. but have to appoint Of course, ministers. it's possible, yes. And, they could uh, be a minister for six months. Mm. Mm. It's all right. So we have Ezekiel on yeah, I talk back on, online. Ezekiel, it's good to have you join us this morning. All right. I think we'll see a Stephen having a similar challenge uh, with Ezekiel. Did but that's as much as we will take. Can you hear we me? have him? Yes, we can hear him now. Ezekiel, can you hear us? No. No, I, I can't hear you. I can only hear you from the TV, which I shouldn't because it's delayed and there will be feedback. I can't hear you from my... All right, Mr. Ezekiel, I must say a very big uh, thank you uh, for all the thoughts that um, you have shared on of the press for this morning. We do appreciate your time. All right, uh, we'll take a quick break right now and uh, not before telling you what happened um, this day in history. Stay with us. <laughs> 